Hi, I'm Mark Hall with Alabama Cooperative Extension System here with John Fulton from Ohio State. John, we've been talking about big data and we were talking off camera about how they collect it on you, but on farmers, is it, is it a worry? Uh, big data, just so much out there and, and this AI, that could, it's not like my income tax records or, you know, records I've had in the past. They can, they can figure out what they need to know about John Fulton and Mark Hall and the wheat field and the corn field. Well, I think, you know, when we think about the farmer, that's a, that's a business operation. And so, you know, we think about big data as it relates to maybe the, the Amazons and Googles. That's more of a consumer world and maybe not completely a business world. But, uh, you know, exposing yourself, I mean, you know, I guess there are a level of concern there, but it's just a matter of making the right decisions. I think when we think about this whole, we've been talking about digital agriculture yes. in this session, um, you know, the, the fact is you're going to want to share data, right? You're, I'm going to, I'm going to call Mark Hall for certain aspects and can you help me out? And I'm going to have to use others as well, but to be able to have access to that data, to be able to share that data, um, collect the data, becomes all of a sudden really important. And if I'm just collecting it, it's all going potentially to, to one platform or one cloud, and, and I really can't, I might be able to access it, but I can't share it very effectively with others. That's really limited my capacity to do business uh, in this world of digital agriculture. So, you know, and we're not gonna, you know, the, touch on everything as it relates to this, but, uh, you know, today, uh, collecting or collecting that data becomes important. If you're a grower and you're you're wanting to 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 utilize some of these prescriptive services, you know I'll tell you most of the people will ask you, you know, where's your yield data? Can you provide some yield data? And so having that data, if you're not collecting that data, uh, really the the potential value that they might bring to your farm or to that field is is could be limited because it, you don't have it. And so that becomes a very important. Uh, aspect again, sitting down having a digital uh, strategy for your farm is becomes very important as you as you know. And the, the other thing we talk about a lot, I mean, we think about this is, uh, you know, you never know two, three, five years down the road what opportunities might exist as as, as this idea around digital tools and analytics, big data grows. Uh, so what I collect today may may not be. Uh, very valuable, may not be usable today, but man, five years when you look back and someone looks at you and say, hey, I need your last 10 years of yield data, for example, and you don't have it, well, now you gotta, you gotta build that field history, that field database back up to, to be able to, to participate. So these are things you gotta begin to think about. And so, you know, this is just a note, um, and we're talking about in the consumer world and, and uh, Alexa and, and other things that are, you know, the Googles and such. I mean, the fact is sensors are all around us. It's growing. It's coming to agriculture. Uh, we talked again about people. We're, we're connected. The machines now are becoming connected. The implements potentially or in some cases are connected. Uh, the field's going to be connected. Machines can uh, communicate e with each other today. If you got two or three machines, you can buy technology where they can share coverage maps. The AB lines for your guidance can be shared right then and there. Uh, but then at the end of the day, you know, the, the key, I think, when we think about data, this whole sustainability, this environmental uh, verification that we're starting to talk about, that uh, data is probably going to be a very important ingredient to, to show the public that as a grower that I'm being a good steward of the land and the environment and, and being sustainable in the practices I use as we explore and what that actually will mean. But data is probably going to be a key key driver in all that, Mark. So this is a, just an exhaustive list as we think about precision ag, prescriptive ag, and all this stuff. You know, there's just a lot of data today. And, and even the USDA here in the United States is is trying to make more public data available. I mean, I forget the number. They say it's 800, and they're on the on the road to having 1,200 data layers that are accessible to the public. And and there's value to that. Making it accessible means I can access it, I can use it. But uh, as a grower, these are key areas that I think uh, spatially, whether that's a, a map per se uh, or non-spatial and production information that we're seeing companies build apps and such that provide and collect data on today at the farm level field level that is as well so it's exciting times like we talked about I can I can watch that planner 
from, a, from an app remotely, uh, know what's happening out there. I can summarize that. But uh, again, this is very accessible, right at your fingertips type, type scenarios, and, and it's being collected, and I can use it anytime uh, thereafter or post-harvest to utilize as you, as you kind of dive in some of the final post-harvest analysis. So today, to me, Mark, you know, and it's just, again, like individuals, uh, the farmstead, the farm has to decide about storage. And, and the way I think we're heading is cloud storage. Yeah. I, I mean, agree. who doesn't have, uh, whether they recognize or not, have a cloud account? Yes. iCloud, um, you know, OneDrive, uh, Box, Dropbox, um, they're growing. And, and the point about this is, is, is not only are they growing, but it makes it accessible where as long as you're connected to the internet worldwide, but it's cheap, it's cheap. Look at the Amazon, of course, they're kind of the, the, the leaders in the world in AWS in terms of storing data. Uh, it's, a, it's O3, you know, hardly anything for a gig, gigabyte a year today. And so storage is not a, a, a problem. I mean, if you kind of put that into some, some tangible numbers there and we figure that half kilobyte per plant, per corn plant that is per yeah. year, that's $300 a year for a 5,000 acre farm. I mean, what are you spending on your cell service? More than that. More than that. I mean, it's getting to where it's nothing. And so I think my point is, is worldwide, you know, the, the internet the cloud storage is going to be at least here in the, the near and midterm, uh, the, the key for storing data. What I would tell you is most of all the, the ag uh, industry is using uh, AWS in some fashion to store data today. Data quality, just to kind of touch on this, Mark, I mean, when we think about digital ag and, and you know, what's the, first, what's the first question any grower asks you, Mark? How what to make your money. Plant. Yeah, make money. You got how, it. Do, how do I make money? And yes. you're asking now these digital tools, what's the value? Well, some of the key is the fact that I better be collecting quality yield yes. data, quality data on my farm. And so you have to take an appreciation. I might have to do a little calibration. I want to have to store and organize that data so people can access and use it, whether whoever that might be that your trusted advisor is. But uh, if it's not of quality, you know, garbage in is garbage yeah. out. And so I just remind everyone that, uh, you know, there's other parts of the data, like maybe as a company, I'm, I'm not so concerned about that yield map, but I'm concerned about the data that I can get. So there's different things and different elements of the data that might be important to different people, especially companies. But for me as a grower, if I really want to get tangible benefit, I better be collecting quality data at the field level where I'm just not going to see that benefit. Or I might be making the wrong decision for myself, you know, that could impact me for a few years to come. And so accurate data becomes very important for me as a, an individual grower. You know, and just as a point there, you know, most of these services will say they want three to eight years of good yield data. It could be four or five in a lot of cases. And if I'm not collecting it or I don't have it stored where I can get access to it, Mark, guess what? We're starting Boy, that, to ground that's zero. a lot of data. Four years, eight years, ten years of field data for... What is the average size farm in Ohio, John? I mean, it just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, down we're, here. I'd say we're somewhere in the mid 2000s. Yeah, probably you know. right around here. That, that's a lot of data. And and being able to organize it and, and put it to use is a real key. So data quality and and the other thing I thought we would we'd kind of talk about. This is the new big thing that we're talking about: data aggregation. We use that in the definition of big data, bringing farms data across the country or similarly together and being able to, to query and look at it in a different way than just as an individual. And there's value, right? We've yes. seen the other industries, uh, especially the medical profession, what they can learn about cancer drugs and things. But, uh, you know, data aggregation leads to this idea around big data. Think about the accelerated learning that goes on. You know, how many times have you done some nitrogen or seeding rate trials, Mark? Well, if I could, if I can give you 200 of those rather than managing three and, and know the yes. data quality, you're probably going to have a, a lot more confidence. You're going to have a lot more that you can learn. And so it's just going to, you know, maybe what it took us three years to learn, you know, I can get done in two years because 
uh, I'm working over different regions today and different environments and I can bring all that together and I'm just going to accelerate uh, learning. And so even as a farmer, you know, I got to be thinking that way. Typically you had 40 years, you know, maybe I can accelerate your learning, uh, to, you know, uh, in, that, in that process. And things are changing so, John, particularly varieties. To make a variety recommendation, they used to say you had to have three years data. Three years is obsolete. I mean, we got to go. Yeah, and, and you know, again, there, we've got a ways to, to go until this, but uh, if we can aggregate it, we can get farmers comfortable that it's not exposing them in any which way, I think we're going to bring a higher and accelerated learning path here. And the other thing, if we think about what's kind of going on is, is we're always talking about phenotyping and, and we're talking a lot about the gene, you know, the genomics people and what they're yeah. trying to do. Well, think about if we can take their world and we can take the, you know, what goes on at the field level world and put those together uh, more rapidly and understand things. Again, these are things that are coming down the road that uh, can really accelerate, you know, going back to your, how does a variety respond? Does it truly respond? We can bring more confidence. And then you can benchmark your farm. Yes. I mean, how am I doing? And, you know, we talk a lot about why well, I don't want my neighbor to know, but if I can do it in a way that doesn't really expose me, maybe I can look at people that are very similar to me in terms of size, the practices. I can look at my uh, productivity. I can look at my business sheets uh, and the benchmarking. If, if, if people aren't providing it to some level already, whether that's kind of profit, whether that's yield or such type agronomics, uh, they're talking about it behind the scenes and trying to get that benchmarking to, to kind of the big thing that's going on and being provided to the farmer. Now there is some things, the cons of that data aggregation. I guess we just need to kind of bring these up. Um, it exposes you, you know, and, and, you know, I guess that can be a positive and negative. Um, you get value, as long as you're getting value from it, you're, you're happy about it. But if you're not getting value, well, you know, you know, there becomes the discussion maybe is one aspect. Uh, but benchmarking or aggregation, when you get into that, it starts to really establish value and you've, your value against other people. Uh, again, just something to think about. Well, it's got that uh, land value to so look like eventually would be tied to this. It, seem, to yeah. it seems like the potentially data, if I've got data and I can, and the, the potentially could be some, some value, you know, helping them yes. improve land prices or and such. And we know people are already using data, right? I can take yes. some of the data on my farm and knowing the soils of, of a farm that I might be considering, I can kind of do some modeling and project what my profit, you know, my bottom yes. line might be. And so we're seeing some of that. So, and then the other thing is who owns the aggregated data sets? You know, IP and all that, why maybe it's not important to you some days in our lives, Mark, but, uh, you know, these are things you got to kind of wrangle with a little bit. Yeah. Nobody wants anybody else meddling in their business. <laughs> and so, this is scary. Yeah. And so I think we'll get there. I think we'll be able to put policies and things in play to, to make sure, but farmers at the end of the day, going back to our prior slide, um, this big data thing will bring value and it's shown out in some other professions out there that we've, you know, mentioned the retail medical in particular. So just some, some ideas to end up, you know, collecting data may limit my participation, my utilization of some of these digital tools out there. Data quality is important. And uh, as, at least as of today, handshakes are great, but now we're working in a data world and, and having some, some uh, terms and conditions and some things, understanding, but people you trust are still important. And I do think that day to day, we've, we've seen some evidence of this already, but data aggregation is going to maximize potential and value generation at that farm, so. John, as always, man, you're, you, you make my brain cells. <laughs> Watch them synapses are going off. Wow, 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 wow. And thank you for that. Watch all our Precision Ag videos. John has a habit of doing that. He will challenge your thinking. Thank you for watching these.